Welcome to Lab 20. Today we're going to be talking about distributed computing, which is an approach to computation that uses multiple computers to work towards solving the same problem. We're in particular going to talk about the MapReduce paradigm, which is one way that's used very commonly today to perform computations over huge amounts of data. So if we go to the first activity here, we're just going to get an overview of what MapReduce is and how we're going to be using it in BYOB today. So read over this. This is all pretty important stuff for understanding the rest of the lab. The essence of it, however, is something that can be drawn fairly well. So if we have a ton of data here, you could say they're all different books, they're all different web pages, they're all different people, whatever you want to do. Uh, if So certain tasks can be partitioned up into smaller versions of the same task. For example, if you're trying to count, the canonical example is if you're trying to count the number of words in a book, or in, let's say, a set of books, all the books in a library, one way you could break down that task is to count all the words in each individual book, and then add together the number of words in each book to give you the number of words in the library. That kind of task is perfectly suited for MapReduce because it's a bunch of the same tasks repeated and that the idea here is that we can do the counting the words in each book part uh, all in parallel. So here we've got six books. In reality this would be like six million uh, and we want to pass each one to a mapper, which is these. These are mappers. Okay. I'll explain that in just a bit, and then we'll have reducers down here as well. And then we get output. Okay. So what a mapper does is it takes an input here, it's a book, and it performs a particular function on it and somehow modifies it in order to output the result. This is something that you want to do for each element in the data. So here it would be counting the number of words in the input, which would be a book in each case. And each different mapper gets a different book. There can be any number of mappers here, so you could imagine there being uh, maybe a million books and a hundred mappers or something, and then they'd divide it up as evenly as they could. So we're going to get a bunch of numbers coming out the bottom here, because in goes a book, out comes a number, which is the number of words. And then the map stage is going to be complete. However, we still haven't solved the problem. We've still got a whole bunch of numbers, not the sum that we're looking for. And that's where the reducers come in. So the reducers take in two inputs. So this will pass on through, this will pass on through to one reducer. And they somehow reduce those two inputs into a single value. Here, that would just be addition. And a number comes out. These two go in here. They add and a number comes out and this keeps on happening. You're always getting working towards fewer and fewer outputs until you finally get to one because you got two going in, you have one coming out, so you're losing one input each time and you just keep going around and around until you get down to a single output from the reducers. And that is your final answer. So the interesting thing here is that all of the maps can be performed in parallel, meaning you can have different machines running each one. So theoretically speaking, if you have the same number of machines as you have inputs, it should take the same amount of time to solve however many, to let's say count the number of words in all of the books, as it does to count all of the words in one book. Because if you've got a thousand machines and a thousand books, each machine is only counting the words for one book, and they can do it all at the same time. So we get basically a, a highly parallelizable operation up here in the mapper, and then the, the reducer also 
ends up being able to do a lot of stuff in parallel. It's not perfectly parallel like the mappers are, but it ends up saving a whole lot of time. And the whole paradigm, the mappers plus the reducers, make it possible to do things that were really, really hard to deal with before in a way that's fairly simple. We just provide one mapper function, one reducer function, and the input data. And we can compute the operations that we want to in a pretty efficient way. The mapper, the reducer, and the input. And that's what we're going to be doing today in BYOB. Now, we're not going to be running it out on a cluster of thousands of computers, unfortunately. However, the really cool thing about MapReduce is that it sort of hides the idea that you're even running on a cluster from you. It's the exact same code to run on one machine as it is to run on a thousand machines as it is to run on a million machines. So the programs that we write today theoretically could be run on a cluster if BYOB supported it. Okay, so let's move on to the actual starting point for the lab now that we've got the background. We've got a starter project here, mapreduce.ypr. Go ahead and download that, and then we'll get this intro screen. And inside this project, we've got five different MapReduce tasks. I'm going to switch over to that real quick. We've got this framework for starting us up here at the beginning. That's going to say some text. And we've got task number one here, which is a basic MapReduce. And then we've got four other map reduces here stored in different sprites. This is today's lab, and we're just going to work through all these and try to build based on build a program based on the specifications that we see in the lab. First of all, let's take a look at the map reduce block just to get a feel for what's going on here. It's nothing too crazy. It's a map which takes inputs. This executes an operation over each element in the list which is exactly what we were looking at in the drawing. right? This mapper executes the same operation on every element. And then we combine them, which is the same as the reducer. OK, then we report back the result of combine, which should be a single value, and call it a day. And that's what we're going to do in each of these five. So this first one is perhaps a pretty straightforward example. Let's take a look in the lab while it describes exactly what's going on. So here we've got a description of the inputs and outputs of both the mappers and reducers, as well as the task we're trying to accomplish. Here we want to find the sum of a sum of the squares of multiple numbers. Uh, our inputs are numbers. Each one is a different element in a list, as shown in this example here. And then we follow through, look at all the rest of these things. And as the code already displays, we've got uh, multiplication as the mapping operation and addition as the reduction operation. So read over these notes, uh, make sure everything makes sense here, and we're going to follow a very similar pattern for solving MapReduce number two. A couple things to note just real quick is we've got gray borders around the functions here. This is because we're passing both of them in an unevaluated form. We want to be able to refer to these functions by name internally. And so we need to wrap them in the grave order to make them higher order. OK. So second map reduce is alpha. What we want is to find the first word in the dictionary in all of Shakespeare's works. We're going to use a reduced set of Shakespeare's works here just for the sake of our sanity. Uh, however, if you're doing this on an actual cluster or even in a slightly faster programming language, it would be totally feasible to do it over all of Shakespeare's work. OK, so the input is all of Shakespeare's works, or in our case, a reduced set. Each word, a different list element. So let's go ahead and pull this up. Go over to alpha. Our reduced set is, in fact, just one quote. We've got to be or not to be. That is the ahem question. We want to find the word that occurs first in the alphabet here. So let's go back. Our map domain 
is a word. So these are going to be the inputs to each individual mapping operation. Map range is a word, so this is the output of each operation still needs to be a word. Then the map function is the identity function. This means that the mapper is not actually doing anything, it's just passing the word straight through, and the actual computation takes place in the reduction operation. So here we go with the binary reducer function, two inputs, single output, and we want to take two words and return the earliest word in the dictionary. And then the output will be after we do the reducer enough times, we'll only have one word left, which will be the one that occurs earliest in the dictionary. Okay. So, uh, an important thing to note here, as it's shown in the comments, is that this variable input is a local variable to this particular sprite meaning that in each one of these sprites we're going to have a different variable called input. These are referring to separate variables, they're not the same thing. And you can tell that by going to variables and just seeing input here is below this line. This is the local, the global local split, you could say. Global variables go on top, local variables go on the bottom. And when we hit the green flag, If we hit the number 2, it's going to launch uh, this map reduction operation, map reduce operation. OK. So the two blocks we need to edit are, as you might guess, the mapper and the reducer. They're both operators. Here's the mapper. Here's the reducer. And they are fairly concise at this point. So the mapper, if you remember, is the identity function, meaning that we actually just need to do this. Nothing's happening. You might wonder why on earth we do the map stage at all, if all we're doing is passing the data straight through. And it's a really good question. The answer is because we have this framework now built, the map reduced framework, that requires a map stage and requ requires a reduction stage. As long as you fit within those two stages, as long as you can fit your operation within those two stages, you can run your programs on the MapReduce framework. So if we didn't want to do the mapper stage, we could either build just a reducer framework, or we could just make the mapper pretty much a, you know, a step that we skip, although we theoretically have something there, and then execute it on the same MapReduce framework. From a simplicity perspective, it's nice just to have one framework that works for both. So that's what people tend to do. Okay, so here mapper is doing nothing except passing the same value straight through. The reducer, oops, actually needs to do something. This is the more interesting part of this problem. So we'll get word one and word two both as inputs. We need to provide just a, one of those two words as output. And the description, or how we choose, is going to be the earliest one to occur in the alphabet. So, uh, interestingly enough, this less than block that comes with B BYOB actually compares numbers as well as words, or words as well as numbers, excuse me. So if you type in alphabet and you type in jungle, this will evaluate to true. Because alphabet comes earlier in the dictionary than jungle. So, if we toss these two blocks in here, word one and word two, if this is true, we want to return word one, which comes earlier in the alphabet, and if it's not true, we want to return word two. So we could just grab an if else. And we want to report word one in the first case, and word two in the second case. And if the two are equal, it doesn't actually matter which word we report, they'll both be correct. Okay, and now that we've saved it, this mapper and this reducer are also local functions, similar to how input is a local variable. So each one of these sprites is going to have a mapper and it's going to have a reducer, but they're going to be different functions. So now, if we just execute map reduce number two, it's going to use this mapper and use this reducer automatically. If you want to see how all this is done, by the way, it's all written in the MapReduce sprite. So all the code is there that makes all this stuff work. So I'm going to hit number two. 
And the result of our alpha MapReduce is the word ahem, which is right. That's the only word that starts with an A, so that seems correct. I'm going to go ahead and take ahem out, get back to the original quote, and what we should get this time is B, B E. Yes, very nice. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. We're, again, the mapper is the, the identity function, just passes the value straight through. And then the reducer is doing a comparison between the two and reporting the one that has that comes first in the dictionary. Okay. Mission accomplished. Okay, so our third map reduce provides all the Beatles song titles with the word love in it. This is effectively a filter operation, removing all the lists. Okay, excuse me. We get a list of a bunch of different Beatles song titles, and we want to find all the ones that have the word love in it. Love in it, excuse me. They have the word love in the title. All right, taking too long on that. Sorry. So the inputs are going to be Beatles song titles. Each song title is going to be a different element in the list. We'll get one song title per mapping operation. The output of the mapping operation is going to be either a list of the song title or an empty list. We'll talk about that more in just a second. Uh, the function description here says we look for the word love in the title. If it's there, return the title as a one element list. Otherwise, return the empty list. Why we do that is a little bit unclear, maybe. Uh, and once we get over to the code, I'll walk through it a little bit. So the reducer function, once mapping is complete, is to merge all the lists together that the mappers and other reducers return. So the majority of the work here is going on in the mapper function, although the reducer is doing a little bit too. Okay, and then to wrap things up, the it, the output is going to be a list of song titles only if the, and all of them should have the word love in there. Okay, love sprite. So here's our input. We've got six different song titles. And again, a mapper and a reducer. These are different than the ones we just made. So if you look inside, they've got nothing. Okay. So the mapper is going to take one of these song titles and it needs to either report a list with one element in it, which is the song title, or a list with no elements in it. Now, let's take a moment to consider why we're doing it this way. So remember if I just draw a quick diagram of the mappers and reducers. Reducers are taking in the inputs of the mapper operations as well as the outputs of previous reduction steps. So if you have a bunch of mappers and only a few reducers, let's say, <clears throat> You're going to start off passing in your two values to the reducers, but not everything is going to necessarily come straight from a mapper. Once these, once this computes its output value, and this computes its output value, these will be provided back into one of these reducers. So the fact that the output of each reducer and the output of each mapper are going into reducers, it means that the format of the data needs to be the same for each one. Hopefully that made sense. So if a word is being provided into the re reducer from a mapper, then the output really needs to be a word as well, because that output from the reducer could be provided back as input to another reducer. And if the format's changing, things get funky and really complicated and not a whole lot of fun. So what we need to make sure is that the output uh, of the reducer and the mapper are the same. 
Here the reducer is going to be reporting a list of stuff, a list of song titles, so the output of the mapper should also be a list of something. If we just report a song title, we're going to be breaking this idea. We'll have, sometimes have words coming in and we'll sometimes have lists coming in. Not a good situation to be in. So we're just going to wrap our text basically in a list, meaning just put a list around it and uh, that'll be good. And in some cases we actually don't want the word to pass through, the word being the song title here. In order to wrap your text with a list, just hop on down to this list block. Okay, so either report the song title in a list or report just a plain list. And if, let's see, list, no sentence to list. So this will convert our words into a list where each space is going to mark a separation between an element. And if this list contains, contains love, whoa. Nice, then we report the phrase. All right, hopefully that makes sense. And this is where the filtering part is going to be coming in. So this, if a song title does not include the word love, it's not gonna make it to the reducers at all. So you might think that the reducer would be a good place to uh, strip this out and it could be done, but it ends up being very simple to just go ahead and filter it out in the mapper stage. Okay, so that's our mapper. What we've got coming into the reducers now is a bunch of different lists. Either empty lists or lists with some number of items. We can, we can have lists with two or three or four items coming in because it could be an output of a previous reduction step. So what we need to do here is just merge those two lists. However many items there are from zero to 10,000 or whatever, we just want to squeeze those two lists together. And there's a function for that called append. So since we know the two data types are the same, the code here gets a whole lot simpler. We know we're dealing with lists. If we just append those two lists, we're going to get a single list that we can output. Report that bad boy. And now let's try it out. So this is MapReduce number three. All you need is love, love, love me do. And that's correct, cool. And all the other ones got filtered out. Okay, so let's take a look at both of those together again. Not a whole ton of code, right? Here over in the mapper, we're, e we're returning a list, reporting a list. That list is empty if the word love does not appear in the title. If the word love does appear, then we report a list with a single element, and that element is the song title. In the reducer, we're just taking whatever lists come in. It's always going to be list. We just take those, append them together, which takes all the elements from one list and adds them to the other list generates a single list and then uh, in this case we're going to be reporting that single list. Okay, and that is the love operation. Alright, this is a fun one. Okay, so uh, all the ideas here are going to be the same. There's one new concept that's a little bit, it makes it seem a lot more complicated, although it's really not too much worse. And that is the idea of complex, complex data. 
Here we're going to be using list, as you can see, to store two different values about each element. So instead of just having one entry in a list, we'll still have one entry, but there's that entry is going to be a list itself. So let's get a feel for this particular problem and then come back and look at that a little bit further. So we're again going to get a bunch of text. We'll call it Shakespeare's works again, although be assured it's a small subset. The input is going to be all of Shakespeare's works, each word a different list element. So if we hop over to UIOB, we'll have to be or not to be to as a list, each word being a separate element. That's our input. So we'll be mapping over each word, and what should we should be reporting from the mapper is a list of two elements, the word and the count so far, which is going to be one. The reducers are then going to take all these ones and start merging them together. Okay, so again we're going to be wrapping things in a list. Uh, not just one list, but we're actually going to be wrapping them in two lists for the same reason we described or the same reason I described for the last MapReduce operation, which is just that we want the same data types to be coming in to the reducer. We'll draw that out in just a little while uh, once we get through this description. Okay, so the map function sounds like it's going to be fairly straightforward. We just take each word and add it into a list with the number one. Then the, in the reducer we take the two list of words and their counts and merge them. So we'll get two different outputs from a mapper or a reducer, but let's think about a mapper for now. Two of those different inputs, and if both of them are love one, then our output should be in a list love two. And if it's love three and love eight, it should be love 11. So we're just adding that second number to merge appearances of the same word. And then the output will be a single list of lists where each uh, element in the first list is another list that is a word and then the number of times that word showed up. Okay, so like I said, the complex data makes this one a little bit more confusing, but it's nothing we can't handle. Okay, yes, yeah, so let's start with the mapper and reducer. I think that'll be the clearest way to do it. Reducer, mapper. The mapper here doesn't really need to be complex. We're just going to put the word and the number one. And this is again the number of times we've seen this word so far. Since it's a mapper and all it's seen is that one word, we can pretty safely assume that the answer here is going to be one each and every time in the mapper. So we'll have love one. Okay, then the reducer is a little bit funky. Okay, now, oh, excuse me, forgot something about the mapper. We don't want to return just a list. You're right, I know you were thinking it. We want to return a list of lists. Now, okay. The reason this is the case is because inside of this reducer, well, what we ultimately want is a list of lists where each item is like, let's say two, and the number three, B, and the number two, or number one, not one. Since we've got two different values per piece of data, the easiest way to represent this is just to form another list with it. And what our reducer is operating on is this ultimate 
exterior list. The parts inside could change, but it, it needs to have the correct structure, which is going to be the single large list, uh, in order for the data types to stay the same when they're coming in to the reducers as both outputs of reducers and outputs of mappers. So what we're what we're outputting here, let me get rid of this. I don't even know why I drew that. Okay. What we're outputting over in the mapper is this list. And then in it there is like two one. Two being T O. Then to merge that with another list, you simply just, you know, append another item on there. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I'll keep talking about it as we're building in case it's still a little unclear. Might be easier to see it in code. Okay, so the mapper is a list of lists. I'm going to save that and then open it back up so we can keep that on the screen. Okay, now the reducer is receiving two lists of lists, and what we want to do is merge the lists where the items are the same. So there are two different cases that can occur when we're trying to merge these two lists. Either a word can exist in both lists, in which case we need to add the two counts, or the word can exist in only one of the two lists, in which case we just copy the element over. So we need a way to check on each element which of these is occurring. Uh, and what we're going to need for that first is just a list of words that occur in one of these two, let's say in the first list. Um, words. And here we just want to get the first item of this. I'm going to go ahead and make a helper function though that just gets word from item. And this is like a trivially simple thing, but it'll just make the code easier to read if it has meaningful terms. So we can grab the word is going to be item one if we pass in an item. There we go. So this is going to generate a list of words. Then what we want to know is for the things in word count list two, if the words for each of those items don't appear in the words list, all we have to do is copy them over into a new list. If they do exist, then we need to sum the two uh, counts. So we're going to have two lists. The first one we can actually get with a keep. So this, let's start off with the easier case, which is going to be the words that only exist in one of the two lists. Uh, so, uh, excuse me, the words that only appear, the items that only appear in word count list two. The second half of this will be the items, all of the items from word count list one. If we take all the items from word count list one and append on the items that only appear in word count list two, then we will be victorious. Okay. So what we want to do is take word count list two and just keep the items that do not appear in this words list. Word from And then we want the opposite of that. Okay. 
So if the words list from word count list one contains the word from each element, we do not keep that item. So we only keep the items of which the word component does not appear in the words list. So unique words in word count list two. Okay, and then we need everything in word count list one. If we merge these two, we're home free. Since we need to pass every item through, we can just use a map here. Uh, let's see, put that over there for now. Okay. So the ultimate output of each of these maps is going to be another two element list. The first part is the word, and the second part is number. So let's see, we could let's make a new block here. Merge item with, <laughs> I guess I'll go ahead and give those unique names. And make them lists. Merge. Okay. And then if we take the output of this, so merge isn't written yet, we'll come back to that. But if we take the output of this block, which is all the items in word count list one, merge it with the ones that don't occur in word count list one, but do account in word list two, then we are finished. So we'll use this append block we used earlier. Toss that in, toss that in. And I think we can just report that Yeah, I think we can just report that. Okay, so now the only hard part is... So we've got two different items. The one from word count list one, and we really want the other to be from word count list two. So we've got, okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so I'm just going to think out loud for a minute here. We've got two word list, and what our keep block is doing, the second part of our equation here, is giving us all of this. Stuff that occurs in word list two, but not in word list one. So we could have a second keep block that give a, gives us the same thing for word list one, or we could just make the same thing cover this entire word list one circle, including the overlap here in the middle. Ah. Uh, Either one is totally valid. I'm just going to go ahead and go with the one that covers the whole circle. But uh, either one is, is totally fine. If you want to try and do it the other way, I encourage you to do so. Um, okay, so that means this needs to handle things that don't occur in wordless 2 as well, because that's the uh, condition for the cent for, for this left side is things that occur in word list one but not word list two. We've already got that covered for the other way around, but we don't yet have it for this. So we're gonna need one more block anyway called find item for word word in list.
And then we'll put that right here. So this will give us uh, the item from word count list one. And then we want to get the word from that, but find the item in word count list two. So we find the item for the same word in word count list two. And this needs to handle the case that the word, uh, the case for when the word does not exist in word count list two. Hopefully that makes sense. If you do it the other way in the Venn diagram where you duplicate this block here at the bottom and do it the other way around so that you get just the items that appear in word count list one, then this part in the middle, you can assume all these words exist in both cases. We're not going to worry about that. It, ah, it's just another way to do it. Okay, so now we've got two blocks right. We've got merge and we have got find item for word. There we go. Okay, so merge isn't going to be too bad here, actually. All we're going to need is to report a list. And these will both have the same word, so we just need to get the word from one of the two items, doesn't matter which one. And then this number here is going to be the sum of the counts from both of these. So let's build another helper real quick. Oops, that's not right. Count from item. Oops. Um, addition. And then the body of this, can't forget that, is going to be item two of whatever comes in. Okay. All right, so to merge these two, we just take the word from one of them. They'll be the same. And then we merge, we add the two counts and report that as a list. I'll click OK. And remember that the result of this map is going to be wrapped in another list. So we will still have our list within a list um, style going here. Okay, so now find item for word in list. Our list here is word count two, and we need to find when the item exists and report that item in that case. And if it doesn't exist, what we can do is report a list with word with the number zero. Okay, so we've got list. We could use a keep here. We want to keep the items where word equals word. Okay. Let's call this matches. And so if the length of matches is zero,
then that is when we want to report this this um, zero block that we made or the zero list that we made. And if it's not equal to zero, then it really should only be equal to one because the same word shouldn't be able to appear in either of these lists more than once. Um, so then we can just report item one of matches. Let me think about that for a minute. Here we're reporting a list with two elements. Here we're reporting a list with two elements. And we know it exists because the length of matches is greater than zero. Okay, yes, this should work. But actually, let's test it, just to be sure. Uh, final items for the word B. And our data structure is going to be Something like this, B4, 2, 1, and let's say OR1. Okay, and we should get B4 out of this. Yes! And if we get rid of this, say it TB, then now we get B0. Perfect! Is that all? Let's see. Let's walk through this real quick. We've got the mapper, which seems to be straightforward enough. And then the reducer gets all the words from wordless1. It merges everything that exists in wordless1 and then appends that to the things that don't exist in wordless1. Um, merge is written. find probably the most complex part here uh, away from this aside from this append structure in general and yeah seems pretty good one way to find out execute All right, we got some outputs. Let's take a look. Two, T-O gives us three, awesome. B gives us two, or gives us one, not gives us one. Ladies and gentlemen, I call that a success. Hopefully that made sense as well. Um, could take one last look real quick before we move on to the last and final challenge. Mapper, fairly straightforward here. We're just forming a list of lists, and that inner list has two elements. And then the reducer, slightly grosser looking. Uh, we generate a words list, which is just the first element of all the, it's basically all the words that appear in the first list. And we then merge the two word count lists according to whether they exist in word count list one. We first do everything in word count list one, merged if it exists, with the things in word count list two, and then we add in all the things that only exist in word count list two. Okay. As you can see, it seems to be working correctly. Nice, okay. Congrats if you've made it this far. Word count's a fairly tough one, I think. Um, and we've got one more example that is really an extra for experts. It's, it's 
pretty challenging stuff. This is going to be even harder than the one we just looked at. Um, and the goal is going to be to build a very basic search index that could be used for finding uh, quotes, for example, that appear in a, in a uh, excuse me, for quotes that contain a specific word very, very quickly. So if we look at the problem description here, we actually see a hint that says this problem is very similar to what we just did. Uh, there are a couple intricacies though, so I'm going to run through it. If you get stuck, I'm probably not going to spend quite as many, quite as much time on the ideas we've already covered. So go back and review the video or the exercise for the um, for the fourth map reduced problem word count. If I gloss over things a bit too quickly, I'll try and hit the things that are new uh, with enough care though. Okay, so the problem here is that given a bunch of web page URLs and the data that comes from those web pages, create a big table that basically says um, if you want to th find things with the word love, here are a bunch of pages that contain that word. And the data structure is going to be like so. Big table. Within this is one list that may say um, well, there will be a couple of these. And in this will be first the word, let's say um, love, and then you've got cnn.com, um, home and garden network.com, of course. And then second word might be end, and then we've got something, followed by some websites, cnn.com, uh, dmv.ca.gov. So the structure here is going to be first the word that we're looking for, and then any number of sites word appears on. Sweet. Okay. Okay, so each element will be at least too long because the word won't show up in the, in the index unless it appears on a web page. So it's going to be always word and at least one site. So the input is going to be a list of lists. The first element in each list is the web page address and the second element is the content of the web page. Uh, let's say a quote from the page. Each mapper will re will receive a two element list, again the um, URL and the quote from the page. And what we want to do is reverse those two things. So we want to take each word from the quote and generate a pair um, that says the word to appeared in Hamlet, the word be appeared in Hamlet, the word or appeared in Hamlet, the word not appeared in Hamlet. And then the reduction stage is going to reduce all of these pairs similar to what we just did in the word count example. It's going to reduce it down to just, um, let's see, to Hamlet Webster. Th this meaning that the word to was written both in Hamlet and uh, in this document called Webster. Okay, so the map function says for every unique word in the web page, make a list of the word and the URL. Return a list of all these pairs. So let's start off with that. This should be pretty familiar. Slightly more complex. Okay, so here's our quotes. All right, let's see. Reducer and mapper. Mapper is going to get each one of these lists. And we want to take each of these words, so uh, sentence list. Let's go ahead and build our 
helpers here too. Get, or let's say, site from item. which is going to be item one of the item. This is exactly the same as we did before. I'm just going to give them some new names. And then I'm going to call the second part the quote. So the site and the quote are the two parts. And that is going to be item two. Okay, so what we want is the quote. We want to take each word from the quote um, and generate a list with that where the word is the first item and the uh, site is the second item. So let's see, that'll be a map. So this is a bunch of words. This map is iterating over a word. And it is going to be, let's see, the word first, and then the site from this sentence. And let's test that real quick to be sure. Looks right, it's a bit hard to tell, but it's got two elements in it. Uh, edit, oh, excuse me, run. It's got two elements in it. The first element of the second item is wit, which is a good sign. Um, let's, let's run with it. I, I got a pretty good feeling. Okay. So now what we're going to be getting is... Oh, gosh, I did the same... Thing I did last time. Let's see. Let me make sure. Oh, just kidding. Okay, I thought I forgot an extra list around here, but it, it looks like we're okay. So here we're going to get two different quotes. Let's have the quotes visible. Broken up into words. What we want to do is merge. Merge where we can, don't merge, uh, and just append where we can't merge. So we can do a very similar approach to what we did last time, uh, starting off with a words list. Ah, uh, geez, wait, okay. Okay, so those are all the words, and we are going to again append two lists together. The second item, or the first item, doesn't really matter, is going to be things that only appear on word list two. Oops. see 
Okay, so we're going through word list two, grabbing just the word part out. If that word is not contained in the words list, then it's unique to word list two. So we want to keep it. And then we need to handle the merge part. Let's actually see if our same merge function can work here. Sounds too good to be true. It is, but it's close. Okay. Um, merge. Call it uh, merge two first with second. Come back and fill that in in just a second. Let's actually go take a look back at word count real quick. Oh no. Oops. Just closed out of that. Curses. Okay. So let's put that in an append. Okay. Back to word count. The reducer. Oops. The reducer. So over all the items in word count list one, we want to merge them with their counterpart in word list two. Okay. So that seems like that idea will work equally well for us over here. Start off with our map. And we're going to be mapping over word sites list one. We want to do merge two of each of these items. Item one will be this, and then item two will be. Uh, what do we call the other one? Find, 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 find. Item for word blank. I'll stick with the theme and say find two. Item for word, word in list. All right, so first we get the word site list from list one, then we want the one from word site list two, and the word should be the same. Oops, oh no. Great, and again, the find two item from word function needs to handle the case where the word does not exist in the site list two. 
but that's doable. In fact, let's go ahead and do it. The approach can be very, very similar to what we did before. How we handle the non-existence will, will be a little different, though. So we'll again build matches. And we'll set matches to keep items such that. Great. Length of matches equals zero. What we'll need to report here is a one element list. I'm thinking through what our merge operation is going to do and it's going to take all of the sites where the word is the same and merge the two, merge the site list together. So in this case we actually want an empty site list which means just the word. If we flip back here what we want is just the word love with no sites. And then when we merge it with something that has a couple sites with it, uh, it's, it's going to work as we would expect it to. So that's if there's no site, if there's no match, we just return empty sites. If there is a match, we just report whatever uh, that record indicates. Report, report, report. There we go. Sweet. Okay, so that's fine too. And then we just have merge two to do. And here we've got two site lists we need to join. We'll want to start off. You know what I'm just thinking about is that site doesn't really make sense. Wait, what's going on here? Hold on. Hold on one second. Word is item number one. Site is uh, not item number one. Sites should be plural, first of all, because it could be multiple. And what we actually want to report is all but the first of item. Because this is going to be a list. It could be any number of things. OK, sorry about that. Hopefully that doesn't screw up everything we just did. I don't think it does. We'll find out. Uh, let's see, so we want the word. The word is going to be the same for both the first and second. That's how they got in here together. And we'll put that there. Then we want to append that with the appended sites from first and second. So if we append Sites from first with sites from second, our newly renovated sites function. There we go. This is going to give us a list of sites from both sources. Now we don't just want to add that as a second element here because then it will be nested in one additional list. What we want is just to append it to this top list. So we've got a couple of pins going on here. In fact, we can just merge it into a single append. Uh, excuse me. List. 
list and list. The first thing's going to be a list, second thing's going to be a list, third thing's going to be a list. And I think that might be all. Gonna merge the word with all the sites from the first element with all the sites from the second element. That sounds a whole lot like a merge to me. All right. So you'll notice this is absurdly similar to the word count layout. We just had to change. Really, all we changed was the way that find to find and merge functions worked. And even those were. Pretty similar, I think. Um, so let's give this a shot. Five. Well, it won't be known for its breakneck speed, that's for sure. Hmm. Let's stop that for now. I don't know if I'm being impatient or whether something's not working. Uh, we know the mapper doesn't work. Whoa. Because we changed site. Site isn't real. Okay, should have checked for that. I forgot. My apologies. So here we actually need to change from a list block to an append block in order to get the data structure we want. We want the word to be first, and then we want all of the sites to come after that. Okay, so the word is going to come in, be put in the first slot. That's going to be appended to all the sites from site sentence, which at this point should only be one. Uh, but let's go ahead and use the generic block that we already have, just in case that weren't true. Let's output that bad boy as text. Let's don't output that bad boy as text. Let's output item 1 as text. Okay, now I'm not even sure what we're looking at. Let's see. So the sites from the site sentence. Site sentence being Webster and to wit. Oops. Uh, da, 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 sites. So sites should be returning to wit. Oh, geez. Yes, because this is so backwards order. Okay. <laughs> this is, I suppose, the complication of building a reverse index like this. Is 
part of the time it's in one order and part of the time it's in another. So this block doesn't do us any good right now. Uh, what we've got is, let's actually keep this. And we want to have item one of the site sentence is going to be the site and then the word up front. That should work. So here we will ass assume that there's only one site, which is really, that's really only going to be the way it ever works out in this example. We'll have one site. The merging of multiple sites into a single term is going to come later. So word and then site sentence. Now let's test this again. Three cheers for testing. Yes. Oh, <laughs> what? What? No! Ah! Ah, <sighs> forgot to save it. That's really good. That's really good news. Okay. Map over... Wait. Not map. Yes. Yes, map. Site sentence, but just the quote. Sentence list for the quote. For each word, we want to return a list. With two elements. First one is the word, so we'll just leave that blank. The second one is item one of site sentence. Make sure I get the green border, or gray border, and press OK. OK. To Webster. Good. Wit Webster. Awesome. OK. So our mapper is now working. That's wonderful news. And now let's actually just test our reducer real quick with this and with this. To be or not to be. Let's just make sure it works, which it doesn't. We've got another bug here somewhere. Okay, so let's just run through the mapper, make sure everything makes sense. It's pretty much what we had before we were just using a function that didn't exist anymore since site was renamed to sites so that didn't didn't quite work out uh, the reducer let's let's see so we've got our word site list we get just the word from each of those that sounds good then we report this keep seems relatively straightforward I think words if the word doesn't exist in this item keep it So we want to keep the items that contain this word. The report none, or report the first thing you find. Cool. Hmm.
Okay, so let's try and segment this a little bit to see if we can figure out what the problem is. I'm just going to pull this blimp out real quick, and let's report words just to make sure we're not losing our minds. Words should be two and wit. Good. And if we... Let me actually duplicate this so nothing gets destroyed. If we keep just the items that are not contained in the second list, we will get B or not B. B or not B. Uh, da, 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 da. What we're really looking for here is something that causes an error because we're getting that error. It's probably in here somewhere. No. Yeah. Got a list and a list coming out there, and list and a list coming out here. How bizarre! Hmm. You've probably already seen the bug and are screaming at me to notice this. Ah. I wonder if I am turned around with the reversing of positions again. Word will be in slot one. So that seems correct. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, okay, and after pausing for a minute and looking around, I think we may have run into a little bit of a BYOB bug here. I just saved the project a minute ago, and things seem to be working well now. If I run the, no, not again, I promise you they were just working. Okay, let's try the mysterious solution again real quick. Okay. And it works. So hopefully that's not still a problem when you're doing this. Um, if you do seem to be getting that error, then saving may help. Alright, so now let's try and run. Now that our mapper and reducer both seem to be working. Nice. So we got some output here. Two is a word that should overlap. Oh, notice that we do have duplicate list here. If the word appears twice, uh, like up here in the Sinatra thing, the word appears multiple times, we get a different entry for each one. We probably just want to get rid of all the 
duplicates in there. Uh, and B, we can see, has multiple references as Sinatra and as Hamlet, which is accurate. B has Sinatra and Hamlet. These two got a lot in common. And then Thales has Hamlet and Webster. Hamlet and Webster. Thales has Hamlet and Webster. That doesn't really make sense. Oh, oh, two. Okay, so two is in Hamlet, Thales, and Webster. Okay. Awesome. So this looks like it works with the exception of the duplicates thing. Should be fairly easy to fix that in our mapper, actually. We take the quote, and let's just remove the duplicates. I think there's a block for remove duplicates from. So if we do that instead, then each word only will only appear once per quote. Which sounds like a recipe for success. Let's test our reducer again, make sure we're still stable. We are. And instead of 11 elements that we have this time, we should have at least a couple fewer than that. Eight. Nice. One entry for do, one entry for thyself, no not, or be wit and two. Awesome. Okay, so that was the Google index map reduce. Let's take a peek again just to summarize it. Got our mapper. And our troublesome reducer. Again, following very closely to the pattern that we had in word count. Our mapper is a little bit more complicated this time, but uh, we're instead of putting just the word and then the number one, here we're putting the site, the word as well as the site that the word came from. So it's still data that we have pretty easy access to here within our mapper, but does require a little bit of additional computation. We're also stripping out the duplicates just so that we don't get multiple entries per um, per site for words that are duplicated. Then over here in the reducer, we are taking a very similar approach to what we did in word count. We take all the words that appear in word site list one and merge them with the items that appear in word site list two. If they don't appear, then we merge them with a record that has no sites in it, which pretty much leads to word site list one just uh, being copied over directly. Word site list two, or the second part takes word site list two gets the items that don't appear in word site list one by looking at word matches. And if something does not appear on word site list one, then it's copied over directly from word site list two. You append those two things together, everything in word site list one plus the stuff in word site list two that doesn't appear in word site list one, and you end up with the whole shebang, which we see here. Awesome. And that wraps up today's lab on distributed computing and MapReduce. Hopefully that was helpful, and we'll see you back here next time.